Hey y'all, here are OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a closer look, quick comparison review of three USI 2.0 stylus pens currently available on the market. And these are from Lenovo. It's going to be the Lenovo USI Pen 2, Pinovo, model named USI 732, another USI 2.0 pen. And last but not least, this is the HP USI Wireless Pen G2. So in case you guys are unfamiliar, USI stands for Universal Stylus Initiative, and it's another protocol that is starting to gain more traction when it comes to both laptops as well as tablets. It's an active stylus technology that serves as an alternative to other ones like the Apple Pencil, the Microsoft PIM protocol on Surface devices, as well as Wacom's own AES and even EMR technologies. There's quite a few different standards floating around, and to be honest, as a consumer, it can be incredibly confusing because one stylus that might work on a tablet that you currently have or a laptop may not work on the next one that you purchase. Having a standardized stylus protocol like USI I think is actually a pretty good idea, and this is a nonprofit association pushing for this as well. That being said, like any standard, it can only become the norm if more manufacturers accept it and are employing it on their devices. So we can only keep our fingers crossed as consumers that this type of product will take off more and more. And it is actually growing. It started off as being a technology primarily found on Chromebooks, more and more, they are now showing up on Android tablets as well, including the Amazon Fire Max 11 tablet that we recently reviewed, also supports USI 2.0 pens, as well as even the Google Pixel tablet also supports USI stylus pens. The way that this works is very similar to the Apple Pencil as well as Wacom AES in that, again, it's an active pen, so it does require power to drive and use the stylus. In most cases, especially USI 1.0 pens, uh, previous generation, they were operated by a quadruple A battery or a quad A battery cell that usually lasts around six months to one year before you should swap it out. Some of the USI 2.0 pens though can now have rechargeable batteries inside, so you're able to just use a USB Type-C uh, cable and then charge it up, use it for a couple of weeks or a month before you recharge it again. However, that differs from Wacom EMR in that these pens actually are passive. They don't require any battery inside. It's also found in Samsung's Galaxy S Notes and also the Ultra phones these days, as well as the Remarkable 2 and the Kindle Scribe are using this particular technology. So there are inductive coils on the inside and it requires an extra layer of the digitizer inside of the screen's manufacturing stack to kind of recognize whenever the pen is hovering over the screen. It's basically using inductive magnetic coils to sense. But again, it adds a little bit more of cost to the manufacturing and just requires more licensing with Wacom to produce. And as a result, even though these pens may be super convenient, they don't require any charging at all, uh, they're also perhaps the most accurate and have the most pressure sensitivity, it's also going to be harder to perhaps produce, especially on more budget-conscious devices. But they still have a lot of the same functionality, including palm rejection. So if you're putting your hand over the screen as you're drawing, it shouldn't really interfere with the stylus experience, as well as increasingly pressure sensitivity on USI 2.0. It supports over 4,096 levels, as well as tilt support as well. Compared to USI 1.0 stylus pens, the 2.0 current generation technically supports NFC wireless charging capability. So it's up to the manufacturer to implement this, and it might be a little expensive. In addition, not every device may have NFC built in, which is probably why we haven't seen this function really adopted super widely just yet. But again, if your phone or tablet has an NFC chip, you can use that instead to wirelessly top up the stylus pen, similar to how the iPad charges up the Apple Pencil. It's also worth mentioning as a footnote that, interestingly enough, USI 2.0 compatible tablets uh, currently are not compatible with USI 1.0 pens, which is a little bit unfortunate. And it's explained by Chrome Unboxed, as well as the USI team, as quote-unquote, because the touch and display driver are more tightly integrated for in-cell used in USI 2.0 standard, touch sensing has to occur within certain timing windows in between the display being driven, and as a result, the spec inside of the USI 2.0 devices is a little different from USI 1.0. So what it means is, if you are purchasing a USI 2.0 pen, it will still work with older Chromebooks and tablets that are using USI, in addition to newer devices as well. 
It's just if you purchase a USI 1.0 pen, an older generation stylus, and you own a newer tablet or computer, it may not be functional. Uh, but a newer pen will still be backwards compatible with older generation tablets and devices. So that part is a little bit confusing and maybe even a bit ironic for a universal in its name approach. That being said, just to be on the safe side, it's why I would really strongly encourage purchasing a USI 2.0 pen since that will pretty much work with every device that supports USI. Now coming back to the main aim of this video, which is comparing these three particular pens, they actually all sell at a pretty similar price, and Panovo is actually one of the larger players these days as far as a third-party maker specializing in stylus pens, and especially USI. They have a couple of other options available too, uh, such as one that has a eraser tip that you can flip over to easily erase things when you're drawing. This particular model though does not have that eraser tip on the end, that being said, all of these pens are found in the $30 to $40 range, pretty affordable, and the type of nibs for these styluses are also a little bit different. So now, taking a closer look at them in front of us, the Penoval as well as the HP USI 2.0 pen both have a design that's a little bit more inspired, I'd say, by the Apple Pencil. So the nib is constructed out of a slightly larger piece of triangular plastic, as you can tell, a bit more hard and firm as you're drawing on the surface of your device, but a little bit more of a cleaner design compared to the Lenovo USI Pen 2 has a more conventional, smaller plastic nib that you can pull out and replace. All of these, of course, are replaceable. If you are drawing for longer periods of time and applying more pressure, it can take perhaps a couple months for them to wear down, or if you're only lightly writing, it might be even years before you have to replace it, uh, but it just depends on your usage. And that's also very similar style nibs as the Wacom EMR style pins, like a ballpoint pen with a bit of spring to it versus a slightly more kind of abrupt texture of a hardened plastic it doesn't really move as you're pressing down for the Apple Pencil style uh, nibs, as you can tell there. Now from a construction perspective, I would say the Lenovo as well as the Penovo ones are probably the best built because they are crafted entirely out of aluminum alloy. They feel cold to the touch and have a pretty reassuring heft to it as you're holding onto them. The Penovo also has a slightly more boxy shape, so it doesn't roll around quite as easily when you're setting it down. And having the Type-C port here on the side, along with an LED indication light when it's being charged up. It's clean and minimalist, but also feels quite comfortable as you're using it as a whole. And in the box, Penovo will give you the Type-C cable standard for charging, as well as an extra nib when it wears down for you to replace, and you can pick up extras down the line as well. And it is a magnetic pen too, so you can snap it pretty easily onto the sides of most metal tablets as well as Chromebooks, and it holds itself into place without too many problems. The Lenovo USI stylus pen, by comparison, is completely round, so it just has a clip on the edge to prevent it from rolling around onto a surface or desk, or you can clip it onto a shirt, which I guess is one mode that is missing on the Penovo over here. But both of these particular models are missing a eraser nub. However, Lenovo's USI 2.0 stylus pen does not use rechargeable batteries. Instead, operates on the standard quadruple A cell that we talked about earlier. It lasts again around six months to a year, so I don't think it's too problematic and kind of automatically goes to sleep when you're not using it for longer periods of time and then wakes up when you tap on the screen once. So I'm kind of split in half when it comes to preferring batteries or rechargeable cells because especially in the past I would have absolutely preferred the Type-C rechargeable type since it cuts down on e-waste, you don't have to throw out batteries when they run out, and maybe it's lowering the cost as well. You just have to plug it into the wall and you're good to go again. That being said, for longer-term usage, if you plan on operating the stylus for years and years, rechargeable batteries may degrade over time, and this might be easier for repairability because it's just a standard cell that you can throw in. Uh, however, it also will add up in terms of cost uh, because you are purchasing actual batteries at the end of the day. So there are pros and cons to both designs here. The Lenovo stylus here is also magnetic, so on compatible devices you can easily snap it onto the edge of the tablet, it will hold itself into place, not too problematic. Now last but not least, the HP USI stylus pen here, 
uh, is actually constructed out of polycarbonate plastic, at least on the outer shell, compared to metal. So from a build perspective, it's not quite as heavy or premium feeling as the Panovo and Lenovo alternatives there. But what I do like here is it actually has a sliding door for the USB Type-C for charging. So it will prevent dust or lint from getting collected and then collapses, hides it from view when not being used. Even though this model also is lacking a eraser tip. And what is surprising is despite the plastic frame, there are still some magnets on the inside, which allows it to stick onto, again, metal surfaces without too many problems. It's just the overall feeling when you're holding onto it is definitely much lighter, which maybe some people would prefer if they want less fatigue for super long sessions, but not quite as premium feeling cold to the touch as some of those metal options. It does have also a bit of a tapered edge, preventing it from sliding around onto a surface or desk, and also, again, attaching onto magnetic surfaces on the side of your tablet uh, or computer. Now, all three of these designs, however, interestingly enough, are lacking any physical buttons or keys, although you definitely can find US USI 2.0 stylus pens with those remappable shortcut buttons. And now shifting into a quick comparison of how they function, some of the Android apps that I personally would recommend for things like written notes would be Bamboo Paper as well as Squid. They support pressure sensitivity with USI pens out of the box without any problems. Ironically enough, the worst handwriting app for Android would be the default one designed by Google for under the Google Keeps application because this one does not support pressure sensitivity. Regardless of how hard you're pressing, there is going to be no differences in the line and latency in this app is actually not optimized well. So that is something that we've been harping on Google to improve on for a while now, but only time will tell if they can improve that default note experience. But we can tell that the hardware actually is quite good because of these third-party apps all performing in a much more reliable way without much latency. So taking an example here with Squid, you can see that we can say something like hello world. And I've been pretty happy here from a performance latency perspective. You can tell that it follows the pen nib here quite precisely and quickly, even though the Pixel tablet here doesn't have an ultra-fast refresh rate screen like something that you'll find on a iPad Pro, for example, but overall the stylus and inking have been working pretty flawlessly. You can also press harder versus lighter and you can tell the differences in the shade come across in a pretty natural way. Now when it comes to the inking experience, I actually have found from a functionality perspective, things like palm rejection actually work equally well on all of the variants that we've tried here. That being said, the differences in the nib aka tip type I think actually suits different applications. For example, the Lenovo USI Pen 2 is better for drawing since the softer nib allows you to more precisely control the levels of pressure, I think a little bit more easily. So you'll be able to more finely control shading if you are in a drawing app as an artist versus the Apple Pencil inspired harder nibs are a little bit better for writing. So they glide more consistently. It's actually quite easy to result in a darker line without having to press quite as hard just because of the more firm style of the tip. So as a result, if you want to get really light strokes, you have to be a bit more deliberate with the harder plastics being employed on the HP as well as the Panovo types uh, just by the design. But again, this makes this particular design actually quite good for just document uh, editing and note taking. When it comes to the feel of the stylus gliding along the screen of your device, uh, because a lot of the Chromebooks as well as even Android tablets are not quite as on the pro side of the spectrum from a pricing perspective, uh, you will in most cases have a glossy panel. And so if you want a more texture that is similar to paper, you can try applying a matte screen protector and that will maybe add just a little bit more friction and as you're writing, make it feel even more natural. So that would be just a tip. Here's also an example of how the tilt is functioning. We can actually hold the pencil onto the side and it becomes more of a kind of charcoal-like effect similar to if you're rubbing the edge of your pencil on a piece of paper, the larger area of the lead there is getting rubbed and will produce a mark like this versus if I actually position the tip uh, more towards the top, you can tell it becomes more of a fine point. So it simulates that texture actually quite well using the USI 2.0 protocol, as you can tell. And that might be one other application where I guess the style here, similar to an Apple Pencil, might be a little bit more beneficial is because you have a kind of slanted curve similar to a regular pencil that makes actually shading feel a little bit more intuitive versus the nib style here is actually a little bit smaller and so as you're 
shading on the side, the tilt mode actually may not be quite as easy to control, ironically enough. However, if you are looking at just differentiating between levels of pressure when you're drawing straight on, it actually is a little bit more comfortable here. And it also tracks pretty much up to the corners and edges of all the displays as well. And from an OS level, there has been closer integration with stylus support in recent months, I would say. Especially on the Android side of things, there is now native support for directly using handwriting to jot down what you want to write. As you can tell there with a pen, and it's going to transcribe that pretty easily also for search. And increasingly, again, with newer versions of Android, you're able to activate functions including the uh, AI capabilities of circle to search, and you can use the stylus to more accurately point at what you want to do. So integration from a software perspective has been getting better, even though, again, compared to maybe solutions like the Galaxy S Pen, Samsung software might still be a little bit more exhaustive. Similarly, with the Amazon Fire Max 11, I didn't find a huge difference when it comes to the inking and drawing experience. It felt actually almost identical to that of the Google Pixel tablet, which isn't too surprising uh, because both are sporting 60 hertz refresh rate screens and they have, again, the same exact USI protocol. So from a latency perspective, pretty much all of these devices using this standard will have a very similar level of responsiveness and performance. And that's inclusive of some Chromebooks that I have on hand as well, such as the aforementioned Duet 5, that again, also works nicely. When the Chromebooks recognize that a stylus pen is approaching the device, you'll see a pop-up at the bottom that allows you to instantly jump into uh, some quick settings, such as screen capture using the pen. You can actually drag across and only capture a certain section. Now, some other things here include a laser pointer, so you can actually use it uh, to kind of show a virtual red line if you're trying to give a presentation and you're mirroring the screen onto a larger TV, for example, as well as magnifying glass, which will enlarge the region that you're pointing at using the stylus tip and also creating a quick note as well, plus check out the battery percentage remaining on the current stylus pen. All right, so in conclusion, that's just been a closer look at three popular USI 2.0 stylus pen choices on the market. But since this is a growing initiative, uh, there are just more and more pens that you can choose between, including th first party ones from Google and Amazon that they've made themselves as accessories for these tablets. But all in all, the performance across the board for the USI 2.0 protocol is pretty consistent from a palm rejection, pressure sensitivity, and tilt perspective, they're all going to be giving you more or less the same. The only slight differences when it comes to ergonomics and design are the ones to just keep in mind. In my personal usage, I found that the Lenovo might be the best if you're trying to do a lot of uh, differentiated light versus harder strokes. Uh, that being said, the Panovo as well as the HP with their style of nib does pretty well with shading and also for general handwriting. And although it feels kind of like a cop-out, I wouldn't say there is one clear winner here either, surprisingly. Uh, just because, again, whether you want a battery versus a rechargeable one is increasingly a personal choice of repairability versus convenience. And similarly, even though I felt that the HP One from a build perspective is a little bit inferior to Lenovo and Penovo since it's completely plastic, there are still elements such as the more lightweight form as well as the collapsible door for the charging mechanism that I do quite like. So maybe there's still room yet for an ultimate stylus that combines all of these capabilities into one. That might be the dream USI stylus pen, but we'll have to keep posted if that happens, as well as see what USI 3.0 brings down the line. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.